Well, we're returning to that epistle that we read just a minute ago. We were in chapter 11, but we're going to go to chapter 1. And uh, those who have been understanding what we've been doing, we have been chronologically gone through the whole of the Bible and uh, we, last week we were in the book of Romans which in our English Bibles is preceding Corinthians and uh, we have been basically seeing that Jesus Christ is the foundational root in every book of the Bible Jesus Christ is there and people who try to preach a gospel without Jesus can't do it with this Bible because God has given us his word and his word he endorses his saviour who came from heaven who was even before the foundation of the world the Lamb of God was slain in the plan of God to redeem us in his foreknowledge so we're going to read the scripture now it won't be too clear on the screen here but if you have your bible it's first corinthians chapter one and verse one and we're going to just read this whole chapter enjoy the reading sit back and enjoy the reading you know when i was a bible student i had to read my bible or i wouldn't have been a bible student a lot of bible students do study all sorts of stuff, homiletics and exegesis and all sorts of stuff and, and at the end of it they study topics topiology and all the rest of it and then you say, do you ever study your Bible? and it's, it's amazing, you look at some Bible courses and you look at the the, 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 um, the, the syllabus and they've got all sorts of subjects but one of our subjects was Bible content and that was fantastic because we used to sit in the Mitchell Library and I remember still sitting in the Mitchell Library and I had to read through books of the Bible and I forgot I was a student and I was doing it for an exam. I just started to enjoy it, enjoy reading the Bible. Get into enjoying reading the Bible. If you don't read your Bible, say to God, repent. Say, God, I'm sorry. You know, people have died to give us that word. There are martyrs in the past Tyndale, who printed the Bible, cost him his life. People have died to give us that word, and one of the saddest things is Christians that don't read their Bible. So that's why when we're doing our Bible course, our Bible course is going to be on Bible content. And it's not going to be denominational. We're going to say the Bible can interpret itself. If you read the Bible, it will interpret itself to you. And uh, if you read only small sections of it, you can go off on a tangent but thank God we can read the whole Bible Paul called him an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and the brother Thessinus to the church of God in Corinth to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ their Lord and ours I like that we line do you know that means us as well he says, I'm writing to this wee church in Corinth. Now, Corinth was a wee slither of land over for Athens. It was, uh, there were two seas, one, one on one side and one on the other, and they'd, they'd built a wee land neck thing where they could connect trade through it. It was a very important situation. It became very wealthy. It was strategic. And a lot of the churches that Paul was used to found were strategic places uh, where the gospel would spread out across the known world. But you know, he's not only writing to that wee church, which was a big church, because Corinth was a very, very big, big metropolis at the time of Paul, but he's writing to us in Springburn. And it says it there, look, to his holy, together with all those everywhere, including Springburn, who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Now, if everywhere doesn't include Springburn, I don't know what does. So he's talking to us in Springburn. Isn't that amazing? That he wrote to that church in Corinth and he included Springburn because he said everywhere. And we're everywhere. If we're somewhere, we're everywhere. And I hope you're here with me this morning as we read the scripture. To those who call in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. 
Hallelujah. Call in the name of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. Praise God. God thus confirming their testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise God. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say. There will be no divisions among you, that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is, one of you says, I follow Paul, another I follow Apollos, another I follow Cephas, still another I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. So no one can say that you were baptized in my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through his wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jesus, Jews demand signs and, and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews, and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards, not many were influential, not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Praise God. He's become our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. And we boast of that fact that we belong to Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, love, as we're looking at Christ and I, we look for him in our living in our reading in our praying when we worship him let's just uh, consider some of the things that Paul has said as he writes to these brothers and sisters here in Springburn as well as over there in Corinth and he says something which I noticed right away that Jesus Christ is the grace giving one who enriches us in every way and is the one who keeps us. Where do we read that? Chapter 1, verse 4. 
We read that Jesus Christ is the one who gives grace. He's the one who enriches us in every way. And he's the one who keeps us. Now when I look at all the social services that, that the nations and the developed nations operate, when we try to do beneficiary things to one another, it's often done in a spirit of service, a spirit of a professionalism, a spirit of doing something that hopefully will help. But when Jesus Christ does something, it's done in grace. What is grace? It's something that gets poured out on us, which is beyond what is asked. Grace goes beyond what is asked and what is needed. When you pour out on someone all that you can give, and I'll tell you something, Jesus Christ gave it all. Now sometimes we as Christians, we restrain on what we give. Sometimes there's a brother in need, a sister in need, and we apportion a suitable time or a suitable a whatever to help another but when we talk about the Lord he gave it all he gave it all hallelujah he is a wonderful saviour grace was given and grace keeps us it's nothing that we did to deserve it you know a lot of religion is all about earning the right about satisfying a rule or a regulation. About becoming worthy or attaining to something. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He took us when we were in the hole and in the pit. When the death sentence was stamped on our forehead. And we were lost and destined for a godless eternity. That's when he poured out his grace. He didn't wait to be crawled out the hole and cried and did something to please him. For we could not please him. We were lost in our sins. And if you learn anything from Corinthians, I want you to learn the first thing that this great man that God raised up to teach his church the things of God. He tells them that Jesus Christ gives us grace, keeps us through grace. And enable us through grace. How do we get through the day? How do we get through our lives? What keeps us going? What is enabling us? It is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in me is the hope of glory. You know to be Christless. Is to be hopeless. Hopeless. And that is the gospel. There are many good people who are not Christians. They struggle through their lives. They do good things. They help people. and They parallel themselves with Christians and say, I'm as good as them. And I'll tell you, maybe they're better. But for some reason of unbelief or pride or whatever it is, they will not avail themselves of the redemption that is available. If I could put it in a simple picture, if I was speaking to children, I would think of a, a, a boat sinking in the ocean. And I would think of the rescue boat coming to save the people who were in the ocean and were drowning. And they're crying to them and throwing them the life belt. And there's this man, he's struggling in his own efforts to keep himself afloat. And he said, I'm as good as all these people. I don't want your life belt. And you get somebody who can't swim, somebody that's struggling, but he says, help me, help. And the lifeboat comes and it gives them the life belt. But this other person is saying, I don't need that. And for some reason of pride or whatever, self-dependence and independence and, you know, you know the middle letter of the word sin is I. And people who don't accept Christ, it's always the I 
that's to blame. I will do it myself. I do not need God. I am good enough. I am worth it. You're not! We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And whether you're one of the finest pillars of society, or whether you're the drunk in the gutter, you need Christ's redemption. For the Bible says the Son of Man has come to give his life a ransom, not for all, but for many. To as many as received him, they became the sons of God. To the many, not to the all. Jesus doesn't save everyone. He saves those who come to him, who call upon his name. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. And so we see that grace is given. It's nothing to do with being worthy. Nothing to do with being good enough to have earned it. It's to do with recognising that only Christ can take your sins away. And that's what enables you to get through life. And people who do not have Christ, who are Christless, are hopeless. Because they enable themselves to get through their life. And I attended the funeral of a dear friend who was an atheist. And uh, I worked beside him as a Christian, a teacher of religious education. He knew exactly where I stood and things to do with God. But he didn't want to do it. He was a nice guy. And as I sat in his funeral and a humanist man said empty words. And he didn't know what to say at the end. Because the man was in his coffin. And our hearts were breaking. Because he died suddenly. He was snuffed out like blown out a candle. Nobody expected it. He was away skiing and having great holidays and suddenly he was no longer here. And the man didn't know what he say. And he said, now we commit him. He didn't know what he say because there was nothing to say. So he said, you know what he said? I'll tell you what he said. It was a cremation. He says, now we commit him to the eternal flame. What a thing to say. What he should have said is, now we commit him to be cremated. But to use the word eternal, because he tried to make something spiritual out of something that wasn't there, and he actually said, now we commit him to the eternal flame. Mm -hmm. And me, I'm sitting there as a Christian, knowing this guy, knowing he was a good guy, but knowing he wasn't ready to meet God, and the man taking his funeral commits him to the eternal flame, and the, what is the eternal flame? I said, God help us. Oh, that people would realise the need saved and stop depending on themselves. They were depending on themselves, on their good works, their intelligence, their ability to look after their health. It is only grace that will get us through. Every one of us, every single one of us needs Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter whether you're the Pope or Rome, doesn't matter whether you're a pop on the street. You need, if you've not got Christ, you are Christless and that makes you hopeless. So here is Paul telling these people in Corinth, who are a right bad bunch by the way, the, if you read some of the stuff later on in the book, the, some of the stuff they were into was absolutely corrupt and it was abominable. But God delivered them from them and made them Christians and they belonged to Christ, you see. So the grace enables us and the grace enriches us and the grace keeps us. Jesus Christ. So where do I see Christ in this book? I see him as the one who gives me life, gives me hope, gives me reason, sustains me through my life. No matter what comes against me, Christ enables me. Hallelujah. Now we did read the whole chapter, so we, we have to look at the fact that there was a problem in this church. The householder Chloe had sent back word, listen, they're all divided. They have all taken sides. Some are saying, I belong to Paul, I belong to Cephas, I belong to Apollos. They've all denominationalized themselves. They've den somebody didn't say it was a denomination, they called it an abomination. They've abominationalized themselves, they've, they've labeled themselves. And Paul said, what on earth are you doing? He says, was Paul crucified for you? Did I baptise you? Don't you get it? I remember going into a church. You ever go into a church and they think that they are the church? 
Maybe we think we are the church. You know what was so good about the meeting last night in here? People from all different churches and yet there was harmony. There's only one church. God has only got one church, you know. And that's those who are bought with the blood of Christ. You know all the jokes about you know, the wee man that went to heaven and he was getting a tour of heaven and he says, quiet when you buy this room. He says, why is that? He says, oh, you've got to be quiet. They think there's only one here. That group in there think there's only one in here. But that's a joke. But there are people who think that they've got a monopoly of the truth. But I'll tell you what you need. You may not have all of the truth, but if you've got the truth of Christ, you have what is needed. Hallelujah. Turn from your sin and trust in the Saviour and you'll go to be with him in heaven. But you see, these people were all divided because the mind and the intellect had got wrapped up. Now, I remember going into a church and the fellow was showing me all his books. We lie, and he says, there's nothing woolly in these books. And what he was actually saying was, we vet every book and we exclude a lot. And it wasn't as much the fact that he'd included these books. What was worrying me was what he had excluded. These are not worthy of us. And there's some great things he had excluded. Men that God had touched and met, but they wouldn't qualify to get in his library. Thank God that God does not exclude us. If we've applied the blood, if we are saved and sanctified, we are accepted. The story goes, you know, about this group who wanted to be exclusive. And they had a tent meeting. So they put up the letters that we've got up here in our church, Jesus saves. They'd stuck the letters up in their tent, Jesus only. They were the ones. Nothing really went on in their tent meeting. But the wind blew as the wind does, and the letters fell off. And unbeknown to them, Jai yes had blown away because that was the first three letters. And they were sitting in this tent and all it said was us only. Us only. They thought they were it. And do you know there's actually churches, and I have a past churches, who don't even put up a notice board. If the Lord will, they will meet there, but they don't tell you when they meet. Because they've become exclusive. Thank God for the inclusiveness of the gospel. Now we're living in a society where the new gospel is include. But what they don't realise is they're saying let's include sin. But the Bible includes us all. The Bible is very inclusive. It says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all included. We are all sinners. But God loved us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. So it's not about being denominational. It's not about thinking that one group is better than the other it is about knowing Jesus and being enabled by his grace to live in our lives what are you trusting in when you die are you trusting in your church membership are you trusting, trusting in the teaching that was exclusive to one group are you trusting in God's given saviour who will take you to be with him if you trust in him. I thank God when I became a Christian, I had a personal experience. I'll tell you something. If I had depended on my church experience, I wouldn't be here today. My first church experience was not very nice. I was listening to a man giving a testimony on Friday there. The man had got his life in a mess. Flo gave a wonderful testimony up at the testimony meeting up in East Cobride. And this man was giving his testimony and there was a lot of terrible things happening. I'm not going to give his testimony. But he says his brother was a Christian. Praise God, he was probably praying for him. He said, I went out and I went to church. He said, I went into this church. Nobody says hello. Nobody said goodbye. Nobody spoke to him. But he went to a church. And that was significant because he was starting to try and find God. So he went to a church looking for God. Obviously the church was as dead as a doornail. They didn't even acknowledge the man. But beyond that, he was still searching for God and he found God. It's not the church that saves you. Churches will never save you. This church will never save you. And when I became a Christian, I met the Lord. It's got to be personal. 
You've got to find Christ and know Christ. And if this church were to burn down the night, as it might do, because sometimes you're troubled with electrics, we don't know. It wouldn't matter, because Jesus is your saviour. Jesus is your saviour. He enables us. Praise God. So we've got to trust in him. And the Bible in this passage tells us that God's way is not human power or wisdom, but Christ crucified. Now, Jesus died on a cross to defeat the power of hell, death and the grave. Now that's not the world's way. The world's way is to mount up a political campaign, a military campaign, and might is right, might is right, and they rule the world. But God sent a child. Made in the likeness of men. The foolishness of God. How was God going to win a people back to him? He was going to let them crucify his son. He was going to let cruel hands take his own son and put him on a cross. He was going to give his blood. He was becoming a man and Jesus died for us. And that was foolishness to this world. Foolish does not make sense to this world. But it's the power of God to salvation. And I'll tell you at the end of the, of the day, the might that God has, because he is omnipotent, all power belongs to him, will one day manifest and his redeemed will shine like gems in the stars in the sky. We belong to Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So the cross is an offence to, to those who do not believe. I was looking up a man who's trying to reinterpret the gospel and try to rewrite Paul's writing. But you know, the first thing that he had to deal with was the cross of Christ. And he doesn't believe in the blood anymore. He believes all roads lead to heaven. As long as you're a good person. But I'll tell you something, that's not God's way. Because there is none righteous, no, not one. And this man might try to satisfy the popular mindset, but the cross is becoming an offence to him. Because Paul exalts the cross. It is what Christ has done that makes us Christians. And always will. Nothing that we could ever do could take our sins away. But God did when Christ was crucified for us. Now the blood is payment in full. It's not nice. There's nothing nice about it. But sin is not nice. When sin is conceived it brings forth death. But Christ Jesus, he paid that price for us in full. Payment in full by giving his blood. So praise God, God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things. The things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom for God that is our righteousness, holiness and redemption. Therefore let one who boasts Boast in the Lord. A lot of boasting going on. You look at the politics and they all tell you how wonderful they are and what they're going to do. And now you get people who live without God and they will boast. You talk to people. They want to talk about themselves. How they are significant. How they are uh, worth consideration. And of course we all are because the Bible says we're all made in the image of God. And you talk to the Christless. And they will claim their own rights and their own claims to fame, every one of them. But I tell you, they have nothing to boast about because it's all temporary. It's all temporary. I've met millionaires, billionaires. They're buried in their graves now. They live for this life. They gathered for themselves all the things they could gather. And it wasn't taken from them. They were taken from it. They were taken from it. As old Danny McVicker said, they were having an argument up in the Hart Hill. Four old guys sitting on a bench, like some night, the, uh, the last of the summer wine story. And they were all talking about a very, very wealthy guy that had died in the village. And they were arguing how much he had left. How much money he had left. And Danny says, I know exactly how much he left. And he said, Danny, you know how much he left? How much did he leave? He says he left it all. He left it all. We come into this world naked and we will take nothing away. And all our boasting is only for a season. No matter what empire you build, no matter what accomplishments you have, you will be removed from it. 
Our boasting is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now can you see what I'm getting at? There's only one message for us today. And the message is the cross of Jesus Christ because that is the only thing that can get you to heaven. It's the only thing that can get you to heaven. You could go out there today and you could endow people with wisdom, with materials, with success, routes to success. I used to be a careers officer. I used to sit with young people. I'd give them guidance along the path into uh, becoming their careers and, and into a uh, progression in this world. But it was all for a temporary because eventually you'll retire. And then after you retire, you will desist. It's all temporary. But the cross is what we boast in because it takes you to heaven. And it's an offence to this world. Nobody wants to know about the cross. And there's churches today that don't want to know about the cross. There are churches that will never sing a hymn about the blood of Jesus. They'll tell you about all the good things they do in the social acts. But we preach Christ. We're a Christ preaching church in here. If you're not a Christian this morning, you become a Christian. I'll pray with you. We'll help you. If you are a Christian and you're one of these people Paul's talking to, remember we're unified as Christians, we belong to him, we're part of the redeemed, and bring others to know Jesus. Now we're going to close our service. I've taken the liberty of putting up this hymn here. Many of you might not know it. But for me, I, I remember when I first heard this hymn, it taught me principles about living a successful Christian life. Now we might not sing it too well this morning, because a lot of you don't know it, but I'd like you to actually home in on the words that you're singing this morning. Most people, when they sing words, they don't actually process the words. They just sing them and they fit them into the rhythm. But I want you this morning to actually see what is going on in this, the words that are presented here, and to grasp a secret of life that we are in Christ and that we are enriched in every way and we are enabled by the Lord. Is there not a lot left to offering? If anyone would like prayer, you do have seats along the front. Just come at any point during the singing of this hymn and we'll pray with you before we close our service this morning. Move me, dear Lord, and others I shall move to do thy will.